Today I'm going to show you what's inside of an AC compressor and how it works to cool the interior of your car. So this here is where the AC compressor sits on the crank side of the vehicle. It runs off of the drive belt. Remove the low pressure hose and remove this 10 millimeter bolt and remove the high pressure hose. There's a couple of 12 millimeter bolts, two at the bottom here and then one up at the top here that need to be removed. Ooh, that's on there. So with all the bolts free, I can remove the AC compressor. So here we have the AC compressor removed from the vehicle. Now if we take a closer look at how this unit works, we've got this pulley on the outside here that free spins with the engine. We've got the armature on the inside here that turns the pump on the inside. And here there's an electromagnetic clutch that closes this tiny little gap between these two here. When they're engaged, these are going to turn together, therefore engaging the AC compressor so that it can cool the system. Over at the top here, we've got a grounding wire. We've got another set of wires going into the compressor. You've got your inlet port as well as your outlet port. Now I'm going to open up this AC compressor to see what's inside and how it works. Spray it down. All right, we're going to bring in the big ones now. And then we'll just remove this little clutch here. You got your clutch material on the inside here and engages with this pulley. So I'm just using a snap ring pliers here to release this snap ring. And then I can pop off this free spinning pulley. You can see that there is a bearing on the inside here that this thing free spins on. Just like that. Now here you can see the electromagnet which is powered by this wiring harness over here. Now you can see that this electromagnet does not need to rotate. That's because you've got your armature here that will actually sandwich itself to this free spinning pulley to rotate together as an assembly as the electromagnetic force from here sucks it through the free spinning pulley and together into a sandwich. Next up we have another snap ring. And then I'm going to separate this electromagnet away from the body of the compressor and that reveals five hex screws. Alright, next up I'm going to use my impact gun to remove these hex screws. Hopefully they don't strip. Now I'm just going to remove these bolts here. So if we take a closer look at what's inside, you can see that there is this oily substance here that's on the inside and that's just to aid with lubrication. Now over here on the compressor we have the reed valve assembly and essentially that's just a bunch of plates put together to form like a one-way valve and it's kind of self-regulating pressure valve so for example you see that there is this little valve here that'll lift up when pressure is pushed from the other side allowing refrigerant to move this way but then when the piston is moving in the opposite direction and putting pressure this way it closes it off and acts like a one-way valve not allowing refrigerant to pass through it. Now on the back of the AC compressor here we have five pistons that rotate with the armature so if I put that on there and I rotate it you can see that they're actually moving up and down as I rotate this armature over here that's actually pretty cool. Now unlike a conventional piston engine you'll notice that these pistons here actually move in a sequential pattern so for example if this one moves up then the next one will move up after it then the next one will move after it instead of being in opposite directions to balance it out and that's just to allow a very even flow of refrigerant through the system and then out to the outlet port. Now I'm going to just flip over the AC compressor and have a look at the front side. Just pop this off. Again you have this very oily residue here. I'm just going to come in with my brother's underwear here and wipe that up because it's messing my hands up a lot. So you can see here the casing looks very similar to the other side except this one has a seal where the shaft will actually go through to the pulleys. Now over here we have another reed valve assembly. Again we have an o-ring. And then we have this gasket here and you can see that it's got its valves on it here that will open and close when refrigerant is pressed on it depending on the position of the piston. And again I'm going to pull off the reed valve assembly and you can see just how the refrigerant will move through this valve here. It will push up up to a certain amount only allowing a certain amount of vapor through. Now this here is the heart of the AC compressor. You can see once again we have five cylinders on this side that are horizontally opposed to the five cylinders on this side. So for example if this piston is being pushed in, on the opposite side that same piston is being pushed out. So this piston here will be sucking in low pressure vapor and then this one here will be pushing out high pressure vapor on the opposite side of the cycle. Now over here at the top we have another four 9mm hex bolts that I'm going to remove next. So the top here you can see we've got your inlet and outlet that leads into the compressor. Now in order to see what's allowing the pistons to move in such a sequential pattern, I'm going to have to split this case in half here. You can see I've got it split open here and I'm going to pull it apart and you can see just what's inside. It's really cool. 
All right, so we can see here just how the pistons move up and down. You have what's called a swash plate here, which is essentially a plate that is mounted on an angle relative to the central axis. And when you rotate it here, you can see how the pistons just move up and down because of the angle of it. It's also moving in a sequential fashion because this is the highest point of your swash plate and this is the lowest point. So essentially the highest point is moving its way all the way around the five pistons and that's what's causing all of the five pistons to move up at a certain point and then on the opposite side it will allow it to move down. Inside of the pistons here, if I remove it, you can see we've got a piston and it's got this little bearing here where it touches the swash plate that sits on the inside here. And I'll also notice there's a groove here but there actually isn't a gasket or any rings like any internal combustion engine. So I'm wondering how internally sealed this pump actually might be. So if we trace the path of the refrigerant through here, you'll see that it goes into the central chamber where the swash plate is located and then it'll travel through these grooves here down inside the middle of these holes here. Now the valve work is actually responsible for controlling the flow of refrigerant between the inlet and the outlet port here which then gets sent back through this hole over here out to the high pressure side. So just a quick overview of how the AC system works in your car starting here with the compressor where it compresses down the Freon gas and then it goes over here to the condenser where it will condense and turn into a liquid. It's then run through a dryer to remove any moisture then through the expansion valve and then the evaporator where it actually releases cool air cooling the air around it down and then it cycles back around into the compressor again. Now some of the main failure points on your AC compressor include all of these o-rings and these gaskets that you see here which could cause a leak. You've got your bearings on the inside here as well as the bearing on the free spinning pulley that could go bad and cause it to wobble. You of course have your electromagnetic clutch here that could burn out which is fairly common and also the relay that controls it also burns out. And then finally you have the clutch itself which could wear out and lose its gap which will not allow it to properly engage with the free spinning pulley to engage the AC compressor. And now as you can tell from my hands everything here is really well lubricated with oil and any lack of lubrication could cause these moving pistons to seize up. Now it's a good idea in winter time to engage your AC compressor for a couple of minutes just to make sure everything is working properly. Now some AC compressors have a built-in sensor here to sense if the amount of refrigerant in the system is too low and it won't allow that AC clutch to engage just to save the compressor and the rest of the system. And that's pretty much all the components inside your AC compressor that allow you to cool your car. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.